In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up any and every commission structure using Excel. So no matter what kind of commission structure you're using, if you want Excel to calculate it for you automatically, this is the video for you. So let's go ahead and jump in. What I've done is I've actually pre-built uh, several tabs here that go through the different types of commission structures and how they're set up in Excel. And rather than building them live, I'm just gonna show you what I've built and kind of walk you through it where you could reproduce it on your end and you can use these concepts and these formulas uh, to do the same thing but customized for your business. So let's dive into the simplest possible commission structure there is, which is a base rate only. So someone who is basically just getting a straight commission uh, off of the gross sales. So in this case, I've got my employees, the total sales that they had for the period, the commission rate that applies to each employee, and a really complicated formula, uh, being sarcastic. Um, so it just equals gross sales, asterisk for the exclamation or for the multiplication sign and the percentage and enter. So there we go. So we're just, I'm going to hit F2 and that's what kind of explodes the cell where we can see the formula in there. So it's just multiplying. And if I click up in the formula bar, you see the color. So it's doing B3 times C3. So really, really simple formula. Uh, that one is the easiest of all to set up. Now let's move to something a little bit more advanced. What about base salary plus commission? So in this case, you have somebody who's earning a base salary that they get no matter what and you wanna to add to that some commission amount. So we've got a similar table here with our employees, the gross sales, the commission rate, but in this case, we have a base salary column as well, where you would type in that base salary for each period, and then we have the total pay, which is what's calculated. So columns A through D, all of this is typed in, and then it's column E that is gonna be calculated automatically, again, with a very simple formula. All we're gonna do in this case is equals and then we're gonna do this salary base pay, base pay cell, B3, plus D3 times C3. And notice you don't need parentheses around these, the way that um, the multiplication or uh, arithmetic works in Excel. And so it's just B3 plus D3 times C3, and that's gonna get you that total pay of the base pay plus their commission portion of those gross sales. Once you have that formula, you can just copy it all the way down. All right, so let's look at the draw against commission structure. So as you can see, we've got some of the same columns that we had before, the employee, their total sales, their commission rate, and then this commission payout, which is what they would be paid in commissions. But inside of that, there's some other columns that we're not used to yet, the draw amount and the recovery amount, for example. So let's walk through what all of this is doing. The draw against commission is maybe the more challenging commission structure to wrap your head around, and there are a few different ways that it can be done, but it's really attractive for some employees and for some employers because it gives their personnel or their commission-based employees something sort of reliable, a base amount that they're getting, and it gives them also this target that they want to shoot for. So David, for example, had 24,450 in sales. This is just a manually typed in number. Again, unless you want to uh, get sort of fancy and have that imported automatically from another program. Uh, column C is going to be the commission rate, just entered as the per percentage that applies for each person. And then their commission earned, this is the formula we've already seen that just multiplies those two together, just like we did on the base rate only tab. Okay, what about the draw amount? So the draw amount, if you're not familiar with it, is just the amount that the employee, or the employer rather, has agreed to give to the employee each pay cycle, no matter what, essentially. So they're gonna get this draw amount, and that is what they're sort of working against with their commission. They wanna exceed that draw amount, because if they exceed the draw amount, now they're gonna get some additional commission payout, and they're not gonna owe the company something. Whereas if they don't meet that draw amount, now they actually owe the company something because the company, for example, we'll look at this with Amber, the company paid Amber $2,500 in her draw check, but she only got earned 1525 in commissions. And so she actually owes the company $975. So let's look at how these formulas are working. Again, pretty simple, but now we're getting into some if statements. So I'll slow down a little bit and make sure you understand how these work. So in this, I am opening and I'm doing equals if, opening that parentheses, and then I need to do a logical test. What I'm doing here is seeing, is the draw amount greater than the commission earned? So notice I do E3, which is the draw amount column, the greater than symbol, and then D3. So it's checking, is this draw amount greater than that? That's the logical test. Now, if that is true, here's what I want it to do. If it's true that the draw amount is greater than the uh, commission earned, then I want to show the difference here because that's the amount that the employee is going to owe. So I'm going to do E3 minus D3. So that's a simple formula. And if, if it's false, I just want it to display zero because there's no recovery amount. If the 
uh, draw amount is less than the commission earned, or, or if the commission earned is greater than the draw amount, well, there's no recovery, right? Because now they're going to make some money instead of owing it back to the company. Okay, so that formula right there is going to give me a zero whenever the draw is less than commission earned, or if vice versa is true, if the draw amount is greater than commission earned, it'll tell me by how much. Okay, now the commission payout is that same type of formula, just sort of reversed. And so in this case, I'm gonna do my equals if, open parentheses, and I'm gonna do my logical test right here. And that logical test is saying, is the commission earned greater than the draw amount? So if the commission earned is over the draw amount, then of course that results in a commission payment. So that's gonna be my value if true argument right here. And that's gonna just gonna be D3 minus E3. And then if that's not true, of course we wanna do a zero because there's no commission payout. Okay, so pretty simple formulas there, but now we are getting into some if statements, which can be really helpful uh, and have a lot of uses. Okay, now let's hop into the gross margin tab and look at how a gross margin would be set up. So with the gross margin commission structure, basically this is for companies where it's gonna make more sense not to pay commission based on gross sales, but essentially on a sort of gross margin or gross profit, which is when you take all of your sales and subtract out the cost of goods sold. And this can be really important as a, a sort of manipulation of the incentive that you're giving your employees, that they're not just trying to get a lot of sales, but that they're trying to actually generate profits, which is what the company typically wants to see. So what we're gonna have then is our employee column, gross sales, which are typed in, again, unless you import them, the cost of goods sold that are associated with those. And if you if you had a more complicated system on the back end, the COGS could actually be automatically calculated. But in this case, we're gonna keep things simple, typing in the gross sales, typing in the cost of goods sold. And then the gross margin, of course, is just the difference of those two. So this column is just gonna be an equals B3 minus C3 to subtract out the cost of goods sold from the gross sales and get you that gross margin. That is going to be the margin on which the employees are paid commission. So David, for example, who has a 7% commission rate that has been set, is gonna receive $2,249 in pay. And that is our same old familiar formula, multiplying the percentage times the uh, total amount of sales that this uh, commission applies to. So that's a really simple formula. And notice if I change David's commission rate, then it's gonna automatically increase his pay. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop into the tiered commission structure. In this case, we have our sales people in this column, the sales cash received right here. Again, these should be looking kind of familiar at this point. The commission rate, uh, which we will get to. This one is, as you can see, a little bit more complicated. And then the commission amount. I'll start with this because it's that same easy formula we keep seeing. It's the sales or cash received in this case times the commission rate. Really, really simple. But what about the actual commission rate? Well, in this case with the tiered commissions, this is where you want someone to earn a different percentage based on the revenue range that they fall into, the amount of sales that they that they fall into uh, the range. So to do that, you're gonna need a commission tiers table that sort of defines that. So over here on the right, that's what I have. So this says for someone who sold zero to $25,000 worth of services or products, they're only gonna get a 5% um, commission. But if someone pay or makes $25,001 to $40,000 in sales, now they're getting 7%. Uh, for example, if somebody sold $75,000 in sales, they're gonna fall into this bracket and be getting 14%. So what we need, we want this table to automatically update when the sales cash received is entered in here. We want to automatically find what the right commission rate is for that person. So to do that, we're gonna use the X lookup formula that's available in Excel as long as you are a Microsoft 365 user. Okay, so to do that, it's equals X lookup. And the first thing it's gonna ask you for is what value you want to look up. Well, the value you're trying to look up is the total sales that they had or the cash received. So that is, in this case, cell B3. So I have B3 as the lookup value. Then I need to do the lookup array. Where do you wanna look for that value in? In this case, it's really important that you make sure you do it on the upper range. If we had instead selected column G right here, that's going to break the formula and it's not gonna return the results we need. So you have to make sure that you're doing the upper range that you defined. And to do that, I'll show you just in case you're not familiar, if I were writing this formula from scratch, <clears throat> I didn't have that, well, I just go there, that part in the formula, and then left click and drag over the range. It's automatically gonna select it. Now I do need those dollar signs in there. Like you see over here, it's gonna keep that from moving all over the place when I copy the formula down. And to do that, I just like to hit the F4 key, click in the formula cell around the um, reference that you're trying to freeze and then hit F4 and it'll add those in for you. 
Okay, uh, so that is the lookup array. Now we need to define the array that's gonna get returned. In other words, what value are you looking up? Well, we're in the commission rate column. So obviously what we're looking for is the commission rate or the percentage as it's called over here. And so that's going to be very similar to the one we just did, but one column over column I. So you see in purple here what we're capturing. Uh, after that, it's going to ask what you want to do if that value can't be found. That's really not applicable in this case. So I just leave it blank. And then the match mode, and this is critical. The match mode has to be one. So notice I have a comma, comma, and then one. And then you can close out that parentheses and hit enter, and that will automatically do your commission rate. So now notice if next pay cycle, Emily Johnson, instead of selling 52,000 in sales, if she does 75,000, watch this commission rate change from 10% to now 14%. There you go, and automatically her commission updates. So that's just an easy way as you're pasting in or uh, manually inputting the sales received for each person, now that commission rate automatically gets looked up for you and the commission amount calculated for you. All right, so last but not least, let's look at the territory volume approach. So in this case, sometimes a company may have multiple territories and they have a group of salespeople assigned to each territory and they want to uh, promote or incentivize teamwork where when one person wins, that whole territory, every, every salesperson in that territory wins. And so to do that, you can do what's called a territory volume structure. So in this case, we have employees, we have the territory that each employee is a part of, the gross sales for each person, how many sales were associated with their accounts, and then the commission that they're ultimately going to get paid. And you can see now this formula is getting a little bit more interesting. Okay, so these first three columns would be manually input. Of course, your employees aren't going to change other than when you're hiring or firing. And then the territory will get assigned to each employee. And then their gross sales is what would be put in each pay cycle. Okay, so let's walk through how this works. First of all, we have a table down here that's going to summarize the total sales for each uh, territory. So to do that, we're going to use the sum if formula. What that does is it sums a range if it meets a particular criteria, if a row in that range meets a criteria. So we do the equals sum if formula, so equals sum if, open parentheses, and then we're going to select the range, and that's what it's looking for right here. What range are you wanting to apply your criteria to in particular? So the, the range uh, that we're applying a criteria to is the territory. Because, right, I'm trying to, to sum all of the sales in the Southeast Territory right now. So I'm going to, uh, the range is going to be the territory, the criteria. So I'm going to do comma, then enter the criteria. Well, the criteria is whatever's in this cell. Now, technically, of course, you could manually type in uh, Southeast, I can spell Southeast like that. Um, but it's going to be actually a little bit uh, cleaner, quicker, and just better practice if instead of manually typing it in with the quotes, we just select that cell that already says Southeast in it. Okay, so that's where the A11 comes from. And then finally, the sum range. What numbers are you summing up? And that is the gross sales. So we do that, hit enter, and now we see the Southeast Territory did 54,700 in sales. So if I were to come here and sum up these two employees that sell in the Southeast, notice the total here at the very bottom is the 54,700. Okay, and then in that summary table, you're going to want to put the commission rate that applies to each territory. For some companies, it's the same commission rate no matter what territory you're in. For others, they may assign different rates for different territories. So in this case, I've got an 8% on the southeast and a 7% on the northeast. And then you're going to have the commission, the total commission for that territory. So the total commission for the southeast territory is that 8% times the 54,700. This is that same formula that we keep seeing over and over again. So that's going to calculate the total commission for the territory. But now each employee needs to have their piece of that. And so what we're going to do then is write a formula up here that will tell us that. Now this formula looks really long and uh, maybe a little bit confusing. It's actually pretty simple and there's only two parts to it. One we're already familiar with because we already looked at the X lookup formula earlier. The next one is this count if, which I'll walk you through in a moment. So the X lookup, we're gonna start with an X lookup and what that's gonna do is it's going to give us the total commission that needs to be paid for the territory that this salesperson is in. So it's going to ask for a lookup value. That is going to be the territory. So notice that my lookup value is the territory that applies to David since I'm on his row. So B3. Then it's going to ask me after the next comma for the lookup array. Where do you want to look up that value in? And of course, that's going to be the territory column down here. So that's where I'm looking it up. And it's going to see, okay, I'm looking for Southeast. Here's Southeast. Now what I want it to do is the return array. I want it to tell me the commission that applies to Southeast. And then uh, if it's not found, I'm not worried about that. So I just did a comma, left that blank, and then the match mode of zero, which is important. 
Okay, so now this X lookup, what that's going to return is simply the commission amount for the territory that that employee's in. Since David's in Southeast, right now it would be returning 4,376. But I need to divide that by the number of salespeople that are in that territory. So to do that and to make it automatic, you know, we could just say, okay, well, I have two employees there, so I could replace this with just the number two. But then if I add a new employee, I got to remember to go back in there and change that to three. Or if an employee leaves, now I need to go in and change it to one. It's much better if we have it automated. So that's what we're going to do with this count if formula. So I just do the count if, open in parentheses, and there's only two terms to this one. It's really simple. So we're going to see uh, how many times in this range, it wants the range first, how many times in this range territory we find the particular territory that our current employee is in. So David is in Southeast, so it's gonna look in this total range that you see in, whoops, that you see in green right here. It's gonna look in that total range and see how many times Southeast occurs. In this case, since there are two employees, it occurs twice, and there you have it. Okay, so just to demonstrate the functionality, let's just say Chris moves from the Northeast to the Southeast, or maybe he wasn't in the Northeast, he was in the Southeast. When I change this, you're actually gonna see the commission rate go up because now Chris was a big producer of a lot of sales. All this 42,000 is gonna get audit added automatically to the total sales for the Southeast, and the 8% commission off of that is gonna be spread out over now, Chris, Amber, and David. So you see his um, uh, everyone in the Southeast territory went up, and the uh, Northeast Territory has changed as well. So that is territory volume. All right, so now we have finished looking at six different commission structures and how you can set those up in Excel. I hope you learned some helpful tools and uh, formulas along the way that you can take and apply to create your own. Now, before you go, I'd really love to hear from you in the comments below. Let me know if you found this video helpful. If you're using a commission structure that I somehow missed, that there's another one out there that you're using uh, that wasn't covered in this video, please let me know. And what I can do is actually make a video to cover that. And also, if you're looking for tips and tricks on how to better manage your team's sales or commissions data in Excel or Google Sheets, check out the playlist on my YouTube channel called Sales and Commissions, where I run through all kinds of different tips that you'll find helpful. So I really appreciate you watching. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you next time.